Welcome to part 2 of this Blender tutorial series where we're creating product visualization in Blender. And so throughout the tutorial series we're creating this studio microphone. So in this part we're going to be modeling the cord which plugs into the microphone and also the prongs here coming out where the cord plugs in. And if you'd like to help support me and this YouTube channel, you can also purchase the finished tutorial project files. Link to that is in the description. Now, one more thing before we get started with this part, I wanted to let you know about my sci-fi construction robot blender tutorial series. So it's an 11 part tutorial series and it's all step by step and in real time. And throughout the tutorial series, I show you the entire process on creating this sci-fi construction robot animation. If you'd like to watch the tutorial trailer video, you can find the link to that in the description and you can also find Find the product pages linked in the description. So let's start modeling the top of the cord. So let's go down here to the bottom. We'll go into edit mode and I'm just going to select this loop right here and then also shift select the other parts. So just select this entire bottom loop here. Once you have the entire bottom loop selected, we're going to duplicate it and move it down and we'll just hit P separate by selection so it's its own object. Let's bring it down here and then if I go into edit mode, I'm just going to bring everything up a little bit so the origin point is there more in the center. So I'll bring this up here and let's just scale it down by a very small amount so it's slightly smaller so it can plug there into that hole. Let's go to front view and we're just going to extrude this down so just extrude it down like that. But I don't want to extrude down quite that far so maybe bring it up a little bit to about that far. Then I want to extrude it and then scale it and we'll make this part a little bit thicker and then we're going to extrude this part way down here. So if I just go back to object mode you can see this part here is going to plug there into the bottom of the microphone. So let's just bring that down there. We'll go back into edit mode and also let's select everything and we'll recalculate the normals. Let's also select this top loop there and just fill a face. And I'm going to select the bottom loop and just bring it down a little bit farther. So something like that. And then let's add a loop cut. So we'll drag a loop cut there. And then I'll just hit control B for a bevel like that. And then we'll extrude it. And then I want to scale it and we'll hit shift Z to exclude the Z axis. Just bring that down like that. And then also let's just go into wireframe. We'll just box select the bottom piece and bring that over. Let's box select this part here that we made and we'll duplicate it and bring it over. And what I can do is just drag it right in here so it's really close to that spot right there. So just drag that there so they're overlapping. And then if I just select everything, I'm just going to hit M and we're just going to merge by distance. And now it just merged that right there so you can see that's merged there. So if I go back to front view, go to wireframe, I'm just going to box select this and bring it down a little bit farther. Then if I just select that loop there, Select that loop there. We'll just extrude it down a little bit farther like that. Maybe select the entire thing and bring it down a little bit. And then maybe select the entire thing and pull it up a little bit. So that's kind of what I'm going for. And then here on the bottom, we'll select that loop and we'll just fill a face right there on the bottom. Let's just bring this down a little bit farther so we can kind of see it better here on the top. Let's zoom into the top and we'll go into edit mode. So we're going to go to the face select, we'll just select this face and we'll just inset this face and we'll just bring it down kind of about that far so that these are about a square shape like that. And now I want to add some loop cuts here on the top. So what I'm going to do is go back to object mode. I'm going to hit the forward slash to go into local view so we just can see this object. And we'll go to top view and we're going to go into edit mode. So we'll use the knife tool with the K button. We're going to click here and then click down there, hit enter. Hit the K button again, and we're going to add another loop right there, hit enter. And then as for the last one, we'll hit the K button. So here's the very center point right here. So we're going to go one, two. We're going to do this one here, go right over, and connect it up to this one. So two farther than the middle. So right there, click, and then hit enter. So now I have two loops there, and then another loop right there. And why I'm doing this is so that we can create the materials. So this part here is all going to be kind of a darker color, and the rest of it is going to be kind of like a silver metal. So now what I want to do is model those holes so that the prongs can go into the holes. So we'll go back to object mode, and we're going to go to the add menu, and we're going to add another cylinder. And in edit mode, we're just going to scale this cylinder way down. Now let's scale it up on the z-axis so it's a bit longer. We'll go to top view, we'll go into edit mode, and let's go into wireframe and we're going to scale it down and we're just going to stick it right about here on the top make it about that big then we're going to duplicate this let's bring it right down here we're going to bring it about that far down and then we'll just bring that over there to this corner and then we're going to duplicate it and stick it over here on the other side so we have those three prongs there for the plug go back to object mode we'll go to solid view and then we're just going to bring this right down here we're going to overlap it and then we'll just use a boolean to kind of cut out that object 
So we'll now select the object here, the main object, and we'll go here to the modifiers. I don't want the smooth by angle, so we'll just delete that. Let's go to the add menu, and we're gonna search for Boolean, and on the Boolean object here, we're gonna choose the new cylinders that we've added. So now if I just select the Boolean here, we wanna leave it as difference, and we'll just apply that modifier. So now I can select this object here. Just in case we wanna use this again, we can move it into our backup. So let's first rename it, so we'll hit F2. I'm just gonna rename it to prong Boolean, so prong boolean we'll hit m and we're just going to move it to the backup collection there and now you can see this object here has those holes now i'm going to go back into edit mode and just to make sure we don't have any overlapping vertices we'll select everything and we'll hit m and merge by distance and you can see it got rid of six vertices so now i want to add a bevel to the object so let's add modifier let's just add a bevel modifier and we'll turn up the segments maybe to like three and then let's just shade the object smooth and then also you can kind of see here there's like some little weird areas here if i kind of move this around you can see because of how the faces are created. So what we're gonna to do to fix this is to just add another weight to normal. And you can see it's gonna really flatten everything out. So you can see there it is before and there it is after. So it looks a lot nicer. Let's just save the project. So now we're going to be modeling a little button piece here, and you push down the button when you are plugging it into the microphone. So in edit mode, we're going to add a loop cut, and we'll just stick the loop cut kind of to about here, just bring it up to about there. Then we're going to add another loop cut, so we'll just drag this loop cut way up here so it's pretty close to the top. So now we're just going to go to the face select, we're just going to select these two faces here on the front of the object like that, and we're just going to extrude this back here, and then we can also flatten it so we can scale it along the y-axis by zero. To kind of flatten it. Let's also do the same thing up here. So we'll hit Control R for a loop cut. We'll put one loop here and then we'll add another loop and put it about there. And this piece is kind of going to be sort of like a, a clamp piece or a connector. So in the real world you kind of push down this button and it kind of brings this other piece down. And then when you let go of the button it kind of moves this other piece out which kind of keeps it connected. So you have to push the button down to release the cord there. So let's just go to the face select. We're going to select these faces here not those faces, these ones here on the very front. And then we're just gonna extrude those faces back. And again, we'll scale them on the Y axis by zero to kind of flatten that. So now what we're gonna do is select these two faces here and we're gonna duplicate them and move them forward. Now I'm gonna add some loop cuts. So hit Control R and we're gonna add four loop cuts, left click and right click so they stay where they are. We'll hit the L key to select everything. We're gonna bring it back here. And then we're gonna extrude the entire thing back in there. Let's select everything and we'll scale the entire thing down just a little bit. And then we're gonna scale everything down on the Z axis a bit and kind of bring it down like that. Now we're going to go to side view. We'll go to wireframe. Let's just use the vertex select. I'm going to kind of make it jagged going back and forth. So we're going to box select this part. We'll bring it in. Box select this part and bring it out. We'll bring this out a little bit farther. Then box select this part. We'll bring it back in a bit. We'll box select this part and bring this out a bit farther. Box select this part and bring it out to about the same spot here. So bring it out a bit farther. And then finally the last one, bring that out even farther. Just like that. Maybe bring it back a little bit. If you select the entire thing, I might want to scale it down a little bit so it's a little bit more flat, but just something like that, maybe bring it in a little bit. And then finally here at the very bottom, we're just going to select these two faces and we're going to extrude them down a little bit. So if I select the entire thing, we'll recalculate the normals, maybe just scale the entire thing down a little bit and bring it up and bring it back a little bit. So I'm going to duplicate this entire object and we're going to bring it up here and we're going to scale it down a little bit and just kind of bring it in so it's inside this spot here. Real quick though, I wanna bring it out and I wanna delete some of it so it's smaller. So we're gonna go to wireframe. We're just gonna box select the bottom here and we're just gonna delete the vertices. We'll select these here, select those four vertices and fill a face, select these and fill a face as well. And then if we select the entire thing, we're gonna kind of flatten it and we're just gonna stick it right in here. Let's bring it back and then we can deselect the back of it and we're gonna pull the entire thing out just a little. And I think I'll select the entire thing again and scale it down and just bring it down a little bit, maybe scale it up a bit. And then we'll go to the face select. We're just gonna select these two top faces and we'll extrude it out. And then if we go to the edge select and select these two edges, we'll add a bevel with control B. We'll just scroll that bevel up just like that. So we have that little second piece there. So I now want to model the prongs. So if we go into edit mode, we'll just go to wireframe and I'm just going to box select this entire thing and we're going to duplicate it and move it up. But now I just want to delete any of the vertices that we don't need. So we're going to select that there and we're just going to delete those outer vertices, select that loop there, and then just shift alt select these other loops there. And we're just going to delete those. And then these extra vertices here, we're just going to delete those. So delete everything except just those circle pieces. So we're going to select the circles and we'll separate them 
by selection. Go back to object mode. We're just going to select this object and go into edit mode. Let's actually bring this up and then in edit mode, we can bring it down. So the origin point is kind of more here in the center. And then in edit mode, we're going to fill the faces and we're going to extrude the faces up. And then if we select everything, we'll recalculate the normals with shift N. Now you can see the bevel is way too big. So with this object selected in object mode, I'm just gonna go here to the bevel amount and just turn it way down. We're just gonna make the bevel really, really small. And then we'll bring this up and let's go down here to the bottom and in edit mode, we're gonna go to the face select. We're just gonna select these faces and we'll extrude them down. And then you can see I wanna scale them in, but they're scaling all together. So let's change the transform pivot point to individual origins. Now I can scale this, extrude it out, kind of scale it again, bring it down a bit, extrude again and kind of scale it down just like that. So it's kind of rounding down. And then also let's go here and fix this bevel. So you can see there's kind of a sharp area. That's because we need to change the limit method. So we're gonna drag the limit method higher until it's not adding a bevel there in the bottom. And then let's just select these faces again and we'll extrude them down one more time and scale them down like that. That's a bit better. I might just select the entire thing here. So select just the bottom and scale it up on the Z axis, just like that. So it's a little bit more round, maybe even select these three faces here. Let's go to front view and I just might bring them down a little bit. So it's slightly more round. That's a bit better. Now, if we go up here to these top faces, we're just going to delete these faces because we don't really need them. So we're just going to delete the top faces. So now what I'm going to do is hit the forward slash again on the numpad to go out of local view. And then we just want to move this object up here. Just move the prongs there into that plug piece. And if I just select this object here, you can see this face is a little bit too high up. So I'm just going to select the face and bring it down on the Z axis. Let's go to front view and go to wireframe and just bring it kind of like that. Right, that's pretty good. And then for the prong pieces, if I go to front view and select the prongs, we just want to bring them down so they're popping out just a little bit. So just like that is pretty good. Maybe even bring them up just a little bit like that. So now the prong pieces are just popping out. And then this piece, it all lines up perfectly. So that'll just plug right in there. Now you can also see right here, this part is kind of overlapping. So if I go into edit mode, I'll just hit L to select that entire object there. Let's scale it down on the Y axis. So it's a little bit more flat and then we'll bring it in a little bit. Just kind of bring into that hole there. So now that just slides in nicely and then it will end right about there. So now we're going to be modeling the cord. So there's kind of like a rubber piece right here and then there's the rubber or plastic cord. So this is going to be pretty simple. We'll go into edit mode. We're going to go to the vertex select. We'll select this face here, just duplicate it, bring it down and we'll separate it into its own object. Let's just bring that down there. We'll go into edit mode and bring the entire thing up here and we're going to scale it up a bit and then we're going to extrude it out, scale it down, extrude it and scale it down just like that. If we select the bottom, let's extrude it and we're going to scale it down just a little bit like that and then select everything and recalculate the normals and maybe bring the entire thing down a little bit more. And then if we kind of zoom in here, let's select that loop there and I'll add a bevel and I'll scroll my mouse wheel to change the size of the bevel just like that. And then also I need to kind of change the bevel modifier. So what I'm going to do is make the bevel modifier a lot smaller. So let's make it a 0 0.001 instead. So it's a bit smaller. So that's the first rubber piece, but I do want to make another one. So let's just duplicate the entire object, move it down. And if we go into edit mode, what I'm going to do is go to front view and go to wireframe. We're just going to box like this entire part here and just delete the vertices. So now we just have the top and the bottom. So we just have basically a cylinder. So let's select the cylinder. Let's scale it up a bit on the Z axis. So it's a little bit longer and then let's just bring it up here and we're going to scale the entire thing down a little bit and we'll bring it up a little bit more. Just stick it there. And then if I just select that loop there, We'll just hit F to fill a face and just bring it up there. So it's just connecting to that other piece. And what I want to do is also select that loop there and we're just going to scale it down so it gets thinner and thinner as it goes down. So now I want to add a bunch of loop cuts. So we'll add a loop cut right up here and we're going to make kind of like a little grippy part of the rubber. So we're going to add a loop cut there and then we're going to add another loop cut kind of to about here at the very bottom. And then we'll add another loop cut. But this time I'm going to scroll my mouse wheel until we have 10 cuts. So if you look up here in the corner of your Blender screen here on the top left. You can scroll your mouse wheel until there are 10 cuts and then left click and right click so they stay in the center. We'll go to the face select and we'll just hold down the alt key and the shift key. And we're just going to select every other loop there just like that. So we have all those selected. We'll hit E to extrude. We'll hit the escape key so it stays where it is and then we'll hit alt S. Alt S is going to scale it along the object's normals. 
So just bring it down and click to place that there. So now we have kind of that grippy spot. Now also the bevel's too big, so let's turn the bevel amount way down. So maybe I'll turn it down to a little less than half. So a 0 0.0004. Now let's model the chord. So we'll go to the add menu and we're gonna go to curve and add the BZA curve, the default curve. Let's just bring it down and let's also rotate it. We'll rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees. Go back to the front here and go into edit mode and we'll scale everything down. Now you can see it's scaling each one of them down, each one of the handles down at once. That's because we need to change the transform pivot point back to median point. And now we can scale everything down. Let's just rotate the handle. We're just gonna stick the handle right about there. We'll select this handle and scale it down. And you can of course shape the handle however you want or shape the curve however you want. I'm just gonna have it kind of going a little bit sideways and then like back. And in edit mode, I'm just gonna bring the entire thing down so the origin point is more in the center and then bring it up here. Let's hit control seven to go to bottom view and I'm just gonna move this right here into about the center. And then to give it some thickness, we can go over here to the object data properties. Let's go down to the bevel settings under geometry and I'll just turn the depth up. And then also I'm gonna turn the resolution up here. So I'm gonna turn the resolution up to like a 12 so it is more smooth. And then up here on the very top, you can also turn up this resolution preview. So I'm gonna turn this up maybe to like a 20. So it's just a nice smooth chord. And actually let's scroll back down here to the geometry and the bevel. And let's turn the bevel depth down a little bit smaller because it was a little bit too thick. That's pretty good. And then if you wanna just go back in edit mode and kind of play around with the shape of the chord and just stick it there in the very center. So just like that. Maybe I'll make the entire chord just a little bit longer. All right, so let's box select all the chord objects. We'll move them into a new collection. We'll choose new collection. We'll just call this chord and click on create. We'll open up the outliner here and we'll just rename all the objects. So this one here, this is just gonna be called chord. So that curve there is gonna be called chord. And then this one here, let's call this plug grip. This one here, this is gonna be another rubber piece. So let's rename this to plug rubber. And then this top piece here, this is gonna be plug metal. So we have the metal, we have the grip, we have the rubber, and then also the cord. And then let's minimize this and we're gonna drag the collection up here to so the backup is at the very bottom. Let's hit Control S to save this, and this will wrap it up for the second part of the tutorial series. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying this so far. And when the next part is released, it'll be linked in the video description, and I'll also have it right up there on the end screen. And if you're enjoying this tutorial series and you'd like to help support me and this channel, a great way to help support the channel monthly is by joining my Patreon page. So if you're interested, links to that are in the description. But thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next part.